You're listening to the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. Some of the material on the Dean Blundell Show is not suited for all audiences. Listener discretion is strongly advised. The best of the Dean Blundell Show is a misnomer. It infers that there is quality involved in the Dean Blundell Show. What this actually is is the least worst of the Dean Blundell Show. The most tolerable. This is the best of the Dean Blundell Show. On the edge. Joining us on the telephone from the website, what would Tyler Durden do? Uh, Jack Tomas. Hey, sir, how are you? Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. Where are you calling? Where, where, where are we? No problem. Where are we talking to you? New York? Yeah, I'm in New York. All right. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, most of the guys are out in L.A., so, you know, I got designated because we're in a... Is that like the farm uh, system? We're in for the same time. Ce- is that the farm yeah, system for celebrity yeah, news? sort of? Yeah. <laughs> are you a hockey fan, by yeah. the way? Man, I, I could tell you yes. I'm I, I'm from Texas, where ice you know melts in December, so mm-hmm. you know we didn't have much hockey down there. No, I guess not. What would Tyler Durden do? Uh, is the name of the website. Some really uh, good stuff on there today. It, 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 sure. And uh, Kim Kardashian uh, all over the news this morning, saying that she looks uh, thin in certain shots, but some of the candid, she looks so fat. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting how that happens when you know her publicist sends out pics or she's on magazine covers and looks thinner than she does when people just take pictures of her on the street. <laughs> I don't know how that. It's, it's a mystery. It's actually a it's Photoshop so uh, program that most people don't even have yet because it's so advanced. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's a special thing for uh, really really rich celebrities that uh, only they have. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know what that even means. I mean, I, I don't think that's possible um, unless she gets, like, more pregnant sometimes than others or she's, like, seriously retaining some water weight. That, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's, don't it, know. you know, it's, it, she's not an attractive. I've said this from day one. I don't even find her attractive to begin with uh, and, and just well, a yeah. shell of a human being, if you ask me, but you know, it, it, right. if, if anybody could get incredibly fat and for us to all enjoy it, it'd be her. Like, I, I hope she doesn't lose yeah. any of the baby weight. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, her whole thing has always been her big, you know, her big butt and now it's, you know, ex- increasing exponentially. Uh, she's starting to look sort of like the penguin from, you know, Batman. <laughs> I would say the penguin specifically is played by Danny DeVito in yeah. the uh, Tim Burton <laughs> sequel. Less than Burgess Meredith in the TV show, but that's just, uh, that's just me. Yeah, she's getting the waddle down, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they were walking out. Her and Kanye yeah. were walking out of a building the other day. This is on your site, too. He's got a pretty good lump on his forehead. Uh, if you go to What Would Tyler Durden yeah. Do? This is uh, Jack Tomas from the website. Uh, I, I, and anything that bad that happens to those two, I actually relish. Like Kanye walking out, smoking his head on a sign. Yeah, no, that was great. It was that was like a, like a Benny Hill or something. Yeah. Like when they speed it up, and yeah. he, he's like going after this paparazzi and smashes into like a parking sign and gashes in his forehead, and then and then he's being like a, a total baby about it, like oh man, you know, it's like that's really gangsta, dude. And then like Kim, you know, Kim is like, oh, it's okay, Kanye. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean. It, the, those two, like, I, I mean, we, we cover a lot of celebrities that, you know, we generally find fairly annoying. But those two are, are particularly grating, you know. What, what makes them so, uh, what makes Kanye and Kim such a pain in the ass for people to hear about? Because I I, I don't, I've never liked Kanye. I, I mean, that album that he did with JC, The Throne, was probably one, and one of the best concerts I've ever been to, guaranteed. But as far as a human being, as far as someone that's occupying this planet that has a driver's yeah. license that pays taxes, that uh, goes right. to the store, these are two of the most uh, insidious human beings I've ever heard of. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think, you know, at least Kanye, I mean, obviously that guy has talent, yeah. you know, to some extent. But, but Kim, I mean, people, <laughs> I don't know, do people forget why she's famous? Like, why do you know who Kim Kardashian is? Porn, she got peed on by Ray J in a video. Okay? Like, she, she, was, she, was, she was used, seriously, she was used as a urinal by a D-less celebrity, you know? Yeah. And, 
And and that's the only reason we know who she is. I mean, she has no talent, you know. At least Kanye, you know, he's he's arrogant. He has some kind of messiah complex or something. You know, he's, uh, but, but there's a but purpose for the reason why he's famous. You know, there's there's yeah, a reason yeah. for it that you go, okay, he's an annoying prick, but he's pretty talented. At least he's given we back. We still don't know what Kim is talented. I can tell you what Kim's talented at, and that's just laying on her front. Yeah, yeah, no, that's about it. And uh, she got and just gone. looking vapid. She's pretty good at that. Her tweets like, are pretty brilliant, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we learned a lot from her tweets, too, Jack. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Jack Tomas from uh, What Would Tyler Durden Do on the Air. A um, couple other things uh, on your website. Farah Abraham, teen uh, mom, she uh, was uh, seen buying a, an, an early pregnancy test. I I I wrote that one. And yeah, the, this is a great headline. Thought, if you could, can you can you give us the headline that you wrote? Oh, I don't remember. Actually. Farah Abraham uh, concerned about ass babies. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, because of the babies. title, backdoor teen. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was trying to. I knew it had something to do with with an ass baby or ass and fat. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, well, what happened is that uh, I think it was TMZ, uh, one of their, you know, uh, photographers was out and they caught her buying um, pregnancy tests. And the rumor was that she was really concerned because, you know, she had had, you know, she had this uh, porn tape that she made with uh, with James Dean, the porn star. You know, they had, uh, you know, she had unprotected sex with a porn star like you do. And um, and she was afraid. She was afraid that she was that she was pregnant. Now I had several thoughts. First of all, obviously this girl did not pay attention in health class because you know for, she she's famous again. Someone who's famous for the stupidest. As she, you know, she's teen mom. She got pregnant, and, you know, as a teenager. But for, I haven't watched the whole video. But what I did see, and from the title, Backdoor Mom, that's not how procreation works. <laughs> like, 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 that's not... <laughs> yeah, I don't, that's not how you make a baby. You know, it's like saying I'm going to no, bake a no, cake no. and then bring in some motor oil and some uh, some lighter fluid. And you go, no, that's not how you make a yeah, cake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I just uh, and well, and she's done it already once, you know. So yes. she, <laughs> she knew, she knew that. She Maybe knew. she was too drunk. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She like she. You'd think after she had practice, some practice at it that you know that, she'd that have a clue. She would know that that you don't make uh, make babies uh, in the in the in the brown cave, but you know. The Dean Blundell Show, the best of the Dean Blundell Show on the edge. Welcome. To the Dean Blundell Show. Today, we'll be opening up the phone lines to find out a little bit more about you. What's wrong with you? Why are you so different from normal people? What happened in your life to make you so odd? <laughs> Please join us, won't you? All right, time for uh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> We've had some good laughs. Yeah. Over the years, we should talk about that one later. Do 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 do. Hi, the edge. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Who's this? It's Jessica. Hey, Jessica. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Good. You sound fun. I am. Are you? Yeah. How old are you? I'm thirty. Thirty years old. Yep. Where are you from? Uh, Barry. Oh, you oh, are you're fun. fun for real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Five more years, you're a kook from Barry. You're like the you're the yeah. most fun. You're the funnest. <laughs> do you, do you wear track suits a lot? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they no. a lot of hockey moms and Barry wear track suits. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. I'm a dance mom. That's the difference. Oh, no. what's uh, what's wrong with you? So I am divorced and I have one child, and I just found out my child's sisters are also her aunts. Explain. My ex-husband, his dad passed away, and for sympathy, I guess, he had sex with his mother and has, has now expecting his second child. 
What? With her. It's awesome. Your ex husband had sex with his mom? Yeah. So his aunts are your kid's sisters? Yeah. Oh. You're going to have to explain that. I am confused. Sh shut the music off so I can hear this. Yeah, I know. I'm starting to get grossed out, I think. I don't know if I'm grossed out yet because I don't quite understand it. I think I'm grossed out. All right. So go I ahead. Left, I left him because he was a little, like, cuckoo or whatever. Yeah. And during that time, his dad passed away, and his mom was like, well, you know, we were trying for another child, and it really sad, and I wanted, piece, I wanted another piece of him, knowing he was going to die. So he said, well, I'm made of him. So they got together and had a child who's now a year younger than my child. And I just found out they're expecting their second child. Oh! Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Is that a real story? I swear on my daughter's life, that is a real story. Isn't that illegal? I mean, if, if the pol shouldn't the police get involved when your ex-husband is having sex with his mom to have more babies? How old is his mom? Um, she's like 54. And she can still have kids? Ooh. Yeah, but they don't turn out so well. They're not all baked right through. It's weird. Said, they're it's, not all baked right through. <laughs> you said that. Yeah. She said it. It's weird to be a mofo with your own mom. <laughs> I've never heard of that one before. Yeah. You're a winner on the Dean Blundell Show. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> wow. I don't even need to take any more phone no. calls. And there's some good ones waiting. I feel terrible for the people. Oh, wow, that one. <laughs> wow, that is disgusting. So do you allow your, uh, fa like, did you call Children's Aid or anything and said, hey, you guys might want to look into this, this mother yeah. effer? No, my daughter doesn't even know her biological dad. He's an Okay. Well, that's just bizarre. I, I'm so sorry. Oh. That, that is, so, so, so nothing going on but the rent then. They, like, they're, they're together now, like their yeah. husband and wife, that's father, so. So, father dad, dad, son, and <laughs> my mom. They have a very close relationship. Well, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> They're touching things. <laughs> <laughs> They're impregnating each other. It doesn't get closer than that. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, that makes me sick. Oh, the whole that is sick. Yeah. Because that what everyone's doing is they're thinking of their yeah, mom in that no, situation. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. I'm not. Everybody I, is. No, you are. Right now, you're you thinking You are. About you are, because how you feel about your mom. Your mom. No. You do. You do. I don't. You do. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. Really, it's just the bad and the ugly. This is the best of the Dean Blundell Show on the Edge. We need a coach like this. I think the I think the Jays would. This is a the coach uh, Todd. Yeah. We I don't want to say what it, it's, it's, it is okay. a coach of a of a sport. Yes, it is a pro f sport it's, coach. Well, uh, don't get crazy. Well, it's professional league, kind of. Just and it well and we can say uh huh. We can say can we say the name of the sport, but not the people that play it. Yeah, why don't okay, we Okay, yeah, it's football. Yeah. It's a football coach. That's a good call. So you kind of understand it, and then and then we'll tell you a little bit more in a few minutes. Okay, go ahead and play yeah. this. This is a, from the locker room of a football team. Yeah, it's a meltdown, and, he, and the coach is now under review because of this. Okay. Let me tell you something, guys. We are playing awful defense. You safeties. How many times do I have to tell you, get your ass back? How many times do I have to say that? Are you guys just f***ing retarded? Or are you just stupid? Which is it? What the f*** do you think back means? It means behind the deepest f***ing receiver. We left the bitch with four m seconds on the clock. Can you pause Why that? are we in her bed anyway? I don't did he say we let that bitch four mf seconds on the clock? Pretty sure he did. I so. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep keep it going. Okay, we'll tell you. To go back we'll tell you who it. plays this sport. We'll tell you. It's a Receiver! football team. We left the bitch with four oh. seconds on the clock. Why are we in bed anyway? I don't know what the f we were doing. There's one play left in the half, and we left the bitch wide open in the worst possible spot, and that's called the end zone. If you don't learn how to play defense in the next three minutes, 
We are in trouble. <laughs> Can I have a drum roll, please? <laughs> Serious. That was a coach of a football team giving it to his team at halftime. Todd, the coach coaches what? <laughs> Lingerie football. <laughs> 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 well, that explains that one comment, then. <laughs> wow. Are you kidding me? Uh, Play that. This guy is screaming at a bunch of girls playing lingerie football. Oh, it is. Play part of that again. Yeah, I start with the beginning. Playing awful defense. Wow. You fucking safeties. How many times do I have to tell you, get your Coach yelling at Are yelling at a, yelling what at a lingerie it? football league team. What? Yeah, he's yelling at the lingerie football league team right now. What do you think that means? It means behind the deepest receiver. We love the bitch with four seconds. <laughs> well, at least he doesn't discriminate, right? You got to watch the play too that he's referring to. It's coming up. It's so bad. Like it's it's like. <laughs> It looks like you're like, I don't know, just kids would be throwing a ball. Like, there's, watch how bad this is. He's freaking out. Watch. You're going to die laughing. Anyway, I don't know what the watch. f we were doing. There's one play left in the <laughs> half. And we let the biggest fire open in the worst possible fire. And that's the whole end zone. If you don't know how to play defense in the next three minutes, it looks like, minutes, it looks like two kids. Are Looks like two kids in tight shorts playing catch. <laughs> and he's that mad. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that is a coach, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, my. That was the funniest catch ever. This girl runs and throws it. She's like, no one's going to get me. I better throw this. Oh. And then she throws it. And some girl goes, oh, I'm open. I'm open. I got yeah. it. She's doing jazz hands to tell her she's open. She's like, I'm open. I'm in here. <laughs> With the jazz hands, <laughs> and the guy is snapping. <laughs> oh, what team was it? Uh, would he not feel like if he got uh, turfed from coaching lingerie football? Would he not feel like the biggest loser of all time? Oh yeah, they're called. Uh, um. Oh crap! That was the name funny. of the team. It's something. Seattle, the Seattle Mist. <laughs> the Mist. Go to play some of that again. Listen to this. Oh, oh my god. D very oh. disrespectful to women, though, with the bitches comment. Oh, yeah. I did not like that at all. At all. Oh. Let me tell you something, guys. <laughs> you are playing awful defense. You safeties. How many times do I have to tell you, get your ass back? How many times do I have to say that? Are you guys just f***ing retarded? Or are you just stupid? Which is it? <laughs> what the f*** do you think that means? It means behind the deepest f***ing receiver. We love the bitch with four f***ing <laughs> seconds on the clock. Sure. Why are we in for that anyway? I don't know what the f*** we were doing. <laughs> There's one play left in the <laughs> half. And thing? we love the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love this play. It's lingerie football league coach. <laughs> Look at this play. It's like two little <laughs> kids playing in tight pants. She's This is the best of the Dean Blundell show on the edge. Here in Canada, we really try hard to be American. Uh, much music video awards. Uh, exactly that. It's all it is. And uh, if you're like me and you haven't watched much music for probably 20 years, or if you're like me and you never really did, um, you'd ask yourself, what kind of people line up for four days to get a wristband to see the guy that sings Gangnam Style? I can't even believe you just knew that, that he was going to be there. Yeah. I found that out yesterday. I also found out who these people were. The Dean Blundell Show. The Dean Blundell Show presents Get to know your MMEA fans. The strangest people you're ever gonna meet. Get to know your MMBA 
Can I uh, talk to you for the radio? You in there? You in there? What's that? Can I? Well, you're not if you're talking. So what's your name? Crystal. And 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 what are you doing here? Waiting for my wristband for the MMVAs. Oh my goodness! How long have you been waiting for? Since yesterday morning. Aren't you supposed to be in school? Aren't your parents concerned about you? In school, yes. Concerned, no. Uh, how old are you? 18. Okay, so so you're like the legal guardian here. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> and, and, and what are you doing here at 18 as an adult, still waiting in a tent, a homemade tent for wristbands? It's on Friday. So you know it's supposed to rain uh, the next two days, right? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Who are you excited to see? Demi. Who's that? You don't know who Demi is? Demi I, Lovato? Demi. Yeah. She's a singer. So, and, and how many songs will she sing? I don't know, I think she's just performing a song, right? One song. So you're going to spend five days yeah. to see we'll one song. We'll be at home doing nothing, we're here. Do you, here. you don't have a job? No. I am Latina. Yeah. Double D's. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. How tall are you? I'm short. <laughs> yeah, and how much you, how much you weigh, you figure? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, there's a Justin <laughs> Bieber pillowcase here. Oh no. Oh no. How old are you fellas? 19 right now. You look like you're 25, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Believe it, I yeah. Am. You are? I want to talk to you after because you're in the tent with teenage girls and that's scary. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's creepy, that guy, huh? Oh, yeah. Right. Where you guys are from Oshawa, I bet, aren't you? Yeah, I'm from Oshawa. You are? Yeah, where are you from? Pickering. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. You're And you live very close to the power plant, don't you? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You have deodorant at least? Yeah. Forgot mine. Eat. What are you eating? Like, Food mainly? Yeah. Yeah. Mainly yeah. Hey guys, I like you a lot, but but it looks like it. It's cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're with a 23 year old. 23 in July. Yeah. My goodness. Now, do you feel a little bit pervy hanging out here? I like to work both ways. So who are you a fan for, and why are you going to waste a week of your life, Cy? Yeah. Well, who's that? Is the uh, like Gangnam Styles yeah. here? Yeah. So you're waiting five days to to see Gangnam Style. To make a fool of myself on it. At the MMBAs. 22, do you, have a, you don't have a job? No, I'm looking for one. You can add this to your resume? Persistence, <laughs> stick to and commitment? I mean, you never know, it could work. There were, say, 400 uh, people here, and they only allowed 322 to get wristbands. How many wouldn't get wristbands? Oh, uh, you got 88 there. <laughs> well, okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, good luck finding a job. And if, and if, you, need it, if you need any help, you yeah, know, don't, don't contact me. I'm not gonna help you. But. <laughs> yeah, put on a shirt. You put on a shirt, dude. Put on a camera, right? Let's let's put on a shirt. There you go. <laughs> Saturday. Ooh, ooh, baby. Ah, 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 ooh, Saturday. Ooh. Are you in school? Uh, not this time. I didn't, no. So, are you? Do you have a job? Uh, no, not this time. Okay. There were 800 people in line here, and they only give tickets to. 697. How many people wouldn't get tickets? 203? No. Demi Lovato? Oh. Well, she's good. I like her. It's the Barney days. Um, so it's, no, I well, not that part. Not that I don't part. enjoy like, I that how, much. like, she went into rehab with, like, being, like, a regular What do you mean? Broad. She went into rehab because she had, like, a mental breakdown. Yeah, but then she, she comes like, out yeah, looking right. like a Kim Kardashian, are you kidding me? Look at that, it's um, a glass I can do without it. You gotta, you gotta, pull, you gotta pull, up your, pull down your shirt. You can see your, yeah, you gotta get your hairy belly. First in line here, is that the deal? Wow, where'd you come from? Me? Yeah. Uh, Mississauga. You don't have a job? I do. Where do you work? Bowling alley. All you losers that aren't getting wristbands, you're a bunch of suckers. Get to know your MMBA fans. It's part of time. I bet you a lot of those parents wish they had coat hangers handy about 18 years ago. Oh, well. Looks like Dean left a note here. Play these best ofs while we're gone, you stupid I think we all get the point. This is the best of the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. This is your Edge. Hold it. Files with Dean Blundell on the edge. Crazy story. I know people like American Idol. I, I personally don't. I haven't watched it since maybe the first or second season. Since Shrek won it? Kelly Clarkson? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Shrek, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
She totally looks like Shrek. You're right. She's got that little Shrek nose and Shrek ass and Shrek body. Um, crazy story. It happened last week at the uh, Red Lion of Pennsylvania, a home shared by Karen Harrelson and Gregory Stambaugh, 57-year-old and 48-year-old, according to complaints. Harrelson and Stambaugh told cops they were drinking beers watching American Idol when they began to argue as to which singer was going to win. <laughs> was it going to be one of the two finalists, Cree Harrison, or the eventual winner, Candace Glover? Um, dispute between the two escalated real quick <laughs> to a mutual stabbing. Uh, though parties dispute who brandished the night first, the wasted couple acknowledged that in addition to the beers, they also cum- uh, as, uh, as consumed some tequila scotch and, uh, and smoked some dope leading up to the American Idol broadcast. Because uh, that's what I like to do is get a real sweet jag on before the American Idol broadcast starts. It's like the Super Bowl, man. You have <laughs> to be that wasted to watch that crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Stabbing <laughs> over the <laughs> winner. <laughs> no, Creed's going to win. No, Candace is going to I am stabbing you now. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know, singing. <laughs> I know singing. I'm a singer. Denise Garrido's reign as Miss Universe Canada was a short one. This is the best. Can you imagine? The Brantford, Ontario native was crowned winner out of 57 contestants Saturday night at the Miss Universe Canada pageant. 24 hours later, organizer realized, Ooh, we made a mistake. <laughs> As it turns out, Garrido was actually the runner-up, uh, named the winner over Calgary's Riza Santos. Due to a mathematical error, someone wrote down a couple wrong numbers during the validation of the computerized scoring results, which always oh, for sure on the up and up. <laughs> A computerized scoring result to see who's the hottest chick. That is the best. <laughs> a typo was discovered in the top five entries, which significantly impacted the final results of the competition. Pageant director Dennis Davila. Ah, there's just a little typo. They didn't scan <laughs> yeah, properly oh, the man, name. We're so sorry. <laughs> this is the first instance of this type in the 11 years that Beauties of Canada, BOC, has produced the Miss Universe Canada pageant. This is an unfortunate circumstance where a human error was made, and we had to remove the pageant crown from the winner and give it to the actual winner who the runner-up was and the other winner will now be the when asked if she was pleased the organizer is like what do you think (laughs) (laughs) hey you just beat cancer yay (laughs) oh Uh, sorry wrong test result yeah you're you're dying (laughs) (laughs) hey you're the most beautiful woman in canada yeah yay yeah, actually, no. no you're, second, you're a sunshine girl. <laughs> <laughs> and in New Delhi, the unthinkable is happening. Um, you're starting to eat meat, huh. and I say meat, I mean beef. You know, in 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 India, cows are extremely sacred, right? Um, apparently now it's a real problem when uh, night falls because of the city's vast homeless population and extremely poor conditions. People are going onto the streets and rustling cattle, taking them home, cutting them up, and putting them in soup and stew. And I guess the religious fact there really has a problem with it because now they've uh, got some cow police that are going around making sure that people are... So don't feed the people. Make sure the cows are able to poop in the street, though. (laughs) Uh, cows being stolen from the streets. Police said they've increased patrols, set up roadblocks in an effort to stop trafficking of beef. Oh, no. <laughs> I understand for drugs oh, or kidnapping. Yeah. Or <laughs> pork. Yeah. Uh, officers have infiltrated gangs in hoping of catching their beef gangs. <laughs> <laughs> the brutal kidnapping continues, and the victims' scrawny cows, which are slowly losing their sacred status in India, slaughtered and sold for meat and leather. Sounds about right to me. Yeah. Uh, cattle rustling called lifting in India is a growing scourge. Affluent Indians develop a taste for meat, and the poor ones can't uh, eat anything, so they need to eat something. There are roughly 40,000 cattle that wander the streets of New Delhi, the mega city, said they graze on grassy medians because people are too poor to actually put them in a pen. Hmm. So sometimes people just make off with them. Plus, they're sacred, right? They worship the cow. Anuj Agrawal said he grew up in a very poor Hindu household tried chicken for the first time in his teens when he was at a restaurant with friends. Oh, did he, love he said, it? I now eat all kinds of meat. <laughs> <laughs> 
He said his favorite are beef steaks and burgers. Quote, once you go meat, you're never going back to fruits and vegetables. <laughs> That's crap. <laughs> I knew it, eh? Once they got that savory taste of beef oh, in their mouth, yeah. those people would abandon religion in a heartbeat. It's all you need. Are you kidding me? Cheeseburger? Are you joking? <laughs> There's no way something this tasty could be holy. <laughs> My God, you stopped us for years. It's so versatile. God, imagine if they had a fillet wrapped in bacon. Oh. Yeah, they'd yeah. start stabbing people. Oh, how could you not? <laughs> nice medium rare. Yeah. Oh. Oh, flank steak. I don't know whether to eat you or stick my stuff in you. <laughs> Love you so much. Those are your Edge Files for the hell day it is in May, the year 2013. Yeah! The Edge Files on 102.1. The Edge. Here comes the best part. This is the best of the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1. Yes, the edge. Craig Gass is here. Uh, getgas.com. I honestly believe this is the Gas greatest pedal. sex story of all time. After the show, the guys in corn said, you tell your friends, all your comedian friends, if they want to come to the concert tomorrow, we'll give everybody backstage passes and we'll get them all into the concert. So we get access to park behind the stage in the loading dock. And when Corn comes up, they actually hook us up and we actually watch the show from on stage. I have really bad ADD. So I go, all right, I'm gonna take a walk. I'll be right back. And I just go to leave. <laughs> As I'm leaving the backstage area, uh, there's two girls standing at the entrance to the backstage area that stop me when I walk out and they go, hey, um, can you get us backstage? Our girlfriend is back there. Um, she's a really pretty redheaded girl. I don't know if you saw her. And they're giving me this whole story. And I'm like, I don't understand. What, what's the problem? You girls are hot. And that's what hot girls do is you always end up backstage. So what's Anywhere. the problem? Yeah. And they said, well, you're not so bad yourself. And thinking they were joking, then we should be making out right now. And they go, let's go. And I was like, are you serious? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, let's go. And I was like, you, you guys want to make out right now? And they go, yeah. And I was like, all right. Can you just hang on one second? I'll be right back. Just, just stay right here. I have an extra pass in the car, so follow me. I walk them down to the loading dock, and I make them wait out by the SUV. Yeah. I go back up on stage to Jay, and I go, Jay, I need your keys, man. Give me your keys. And he goes, for what? I go, I'll tell you in a minute. Just give me your keys. I go back down to the loading dock. I get a working pass out of the glove box, and I give it to the girl. And I say, look, this is like an all-access pass. You're all set. And she goes, thank you. She leans in, and she kisses me. Mm -hmm. And Tongue? then, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And now I go, it's getting hot. wow. And I look over at one of the other girls, and the other girl and I start kissing. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's then the third classic. girl and I yeah, start, start making, making out. out. Yeah. And then we start getting really weird in a really public place. Like, there's, like, stage hands, and I go, all right, get in the car. Everyone get in the car. Everyone, and I unlock all the doors, and we all jump in the car. And I ended up uh, making love. Having sex with right. three yeah. chicks? Right. I'm in the passenger seat of the car. One yeah, no girl, steering wheel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah. he has to be in the passenger seat. Yeah, yeah. And one, one girl, <laughs> one girl's in the front with me while the other two are in the back coaching. Yes. Okay. And then they switch, and then another girl will jump at the front, and then the other two would coach. At one point, I actually saw flashes going off on the right side of the car, and I realized, like, 12 guys taking pictures and filming going, yeah! <laughs> and I had, like, one free hand to give him a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. so, and after the finish, um, I hear one of the girls going, oh, my God, Lincoln Park is on stage. We're missing Lincoln Park. Can we go watch Lincoln Park? And I was like, you girls can do whatever the hell you want. That, that's the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, my God. Yeah. Just, hey, can you do me a favor? Just do me a favor. Just, just come back. <laughs> like, 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 we should do that again. You girls are awesome. And so we all go split up and go our separate ways, right? Yeah. And I go up on stage, and I see Big J, who's been looking for me for now. And he goes, dude, where the hell are you? And I go, Jay, you're not going to believe this. I just had sex with three girls at the same time in your car. Gas, <laughs> yes, please, please tell me you're kidding me. And I go, why? What's wrong? And he goes, that's a brand new car. And I go, who cares about your car? <laughs> are you serious? That's and not you get to the car. <laughs> Big J goes on one side of the car. Carla, his girlfriend, opens up the driver's side door, yeah. leans in, and starts screaming. Big J comes over to her side of the car, and he goes, what's wrong? And she starts whispering to him, and he goes, nice job, Gas. Good job. And I go, what's wrong? He goes, uh, one of your girls stole $400 out of Carla's purse. <laughs> oh. And we realize... Two minutes later, there's jewelry missing from the car. <laughs> and then two minutes after that, 
We hear a cell phone ringing in the car. There's a cell phone underneath the driver's seat. One of the girls dropped her cell phone. No. It rolled underneath the driver's seat, and now she's trying to get her phone back. So Carla picks up the phone and goes, hello? Hi. Yeah. Just come back to the, because we're leaving right now. Yeah, but you need to come to the car right now. And she hangs up the phone. She grabs a police officer and she goes, excuse me, sir. Um, we were just robbed. There were three girls in our car who <laughs> stole our uh, money and stole our jewelry. And the cop goes, hold on a sec. And the cop gets on the radio and he goes, we got a robbery backstage. Uh, you're going to need some backup. <laughs> this blue van pulls up and two of the girls get out and they start walking towards us. They see the cops, but they start walking towards us and they go, hey, can we get our phone back? And Big J, who is livid, goes, uh, yeah, but real quick, uh, which one of you whores stole money out of my girlfriend's purse? <laughs> and a door opened up to the van, and a guy jumped out and said, just call her a whore? That's my wife. I'll kick your ass. He goes, that's your wife? Yes, come here. Come here. Get over here. Did you not just get done telling me that you just had sex with all three of these girls at the same time in my car? Is that not what you just said? Did you not just tell me that you just had sex with all three of these whores at the same time in my car? A second door opens up to the van, and a second guy jumps out and goes, Do you say this guy just had sex with all of our wives? And you I'm, mean the bouncer didn't say, I got video of it too. Yeah. <laughs> We're all yeah, they did right here. Now, right here. now there's a crowd gathering, and I'm in shock. Cop goes over to Carla and goes, Carla, come here. Hey, uh, so here's what's going on. These girls have money, they have cash. Uh, but you can't prove whose cash that is, okay? As far as your personal items that are missing, uh, your jewelry and stuff, they don't have them, so we gotta let them go. I'm sorry. As the van is pulling away, all of Carla's stuff is underneath the van. Like her jewelry and everything is right underneath the van. They box them in with three cop cars, pull all the girls out, and they arrest them. And this is right outside the entrance to the concert venue. Lincoln, Everyone's, everyone. Lincoln yeah. Park has just walked off stage, and there's 20,000 people coming out, and all you see is cop cars everywhere, and these girls are arrested in the van. Not that many people know what's going on, but the people that do know what's going on are trying to tell everybody. They're like, dude, uh, you see that guy? Dude, that guy had sex with all three of those girls, and they're all going to jail. They're all going to jail. And people are cheering and screaming at me like, you're the man. You're the man. And I, I have to be quiet because I'm involved with all these cops. But in my head, I'm thinking... Yeah. yeah, this is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> if you ever had a chance to have sex with three women at the same time, you want cop cars yeah. and police helicopters and crowds cheering and Lincoln Park. Performing. So what happened at the so what at the end? What happened? We get a police escort to walk us out, and one of the husbands is standing out in front of the police station. He goes, "Craig, can I talk to you for one second? I go, I, and the cop goes, "Wait a minute, sir." Go to your car if you don't want any problems. The guy goes, look. He goes, Craig, I'm not, I'm not going to hit you. I'm not mad at you. I just want to know what happened. Can you just tell me the truth? Look, I, I would have done the same thing, okay? My wife's a beautiful woman, but I just want to know the truth, all right? I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at her. Can you just tell me what happened? And I go, I'm sorry, man. It, it, it happened. And he goes, okay, specifically, did she, like, use her mouth? And I go, and the cop goes, sir, get out of here. What are you doing? Get out. You go this way. You go this way. And everyone's yelling. I go, I go, look, you want to know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. I told him specifically what happened to his wife. And he leaned over and went, thank you. And he shook my hand. And I said, you're he welcome. Thanked you. So at the end of it, you got to thank you from one he of the said, husbands. He said, thank you. For being honest. For being honest. That's yeah, exactly what he said. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for being honest. Thank you. And I said, you're welcome. <laughs> <I> said, <laughs> and it was the great, like, my friend Jay was like, dude, what kind of guy, after you said what you just said to him about his wife, yeah. shakes your hand and says, thank you. I go, I don't know, but that you think guy. about it. Like, I'm a Mariners. I'm a Seahawks fan. Like, none of my teams ever won a championship. Tonight, I'm like a World Series MVP. I'm a Super Bowl champion. <laughs> You're I'm going like, to Disney World. I'm going to Disney World. I'm going to Disney World. It was the greatest night of my life. Check this out. The guys are on vacation, but you're still hearing them. Trippy, huh? I'll bet they'd be pissed if they knew. <laughs> this is the best of the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. Hold the phones, everybody. Dr. Ken Jeong is here. Hello. Oh, we're doing this hey. right now. Hey. Yeah. We're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dean. <laughs> Ciao, how are you? Fine, how are you guys doing? Dude, really, really a pleasure to meet you. I know uh, you, you're, it's like a whirlwind, but the, the, you, you, I was just reading about you. you you've gone from being a doctor, stand-up comic, to uh, a big actor, big, funny, super awesome actor in like seven years. Oh, well, yeah, this is so surreal, but the, uh, 
this has remained the same. I don't know if the, I can say the wiener. That. You can yeah, say the I, wiener. Okay, can I say the wiener? Yeah, yeah. your Which, wieners. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The, the 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 fame has increased, but the wiener has remained uh, <laughs> uh, small and grounded. Well, yeah. with because <laughs> you show that you you uh, that's a not many male leads show their show wieners. their wieners. I think I, I think I have the luxury of being married and having a wife who's very supportive with an amazing sense of humor. So she pretty much just lets me do, lets me do my thing. So and you know I, ha- I have two kids, so it works. You know? so, <laughs> There's proof. I like that. There's yeah. proof. Yeah, yeah. There's proof in the pudding. You know what I saying? <laughs> Ken Jeong, our guest. Uh, Chow in the next movie, The Hangover Part Three. Very very funny movie. Uh, you you have a huge role, very expanded role in this. Oh yeah, this is a uh, you know as an it's actor, about you. It's it's the yeah. It, it's the biggest thing. It's the biggest thing I've ever done. The biggest part I've ever had in the movie. I'm just so grateful. And I, you know, it, it's so it's so surreal because it, in the first movie, you know, I was only in the movie for about five minutes, and yeah. it, but it broke. It really was my breakout role, and it, it's the everything I've had in the last four years is solely due to the Hangover. Is it so, really? Yeah, yeah. It just changed my life from black and white to Technicolor. It just changed everything. I just, it just changed my, my life and my career. Well, at what point did you go, okay, I'm a doctor? Because you're, you're a licensed physician right. in California. Right. Uh, right. And you, you went, your, your parents, your, profe- your dad's a professor. Yeah. Uh, very, very smart family. You go to med school. Did you always say, ah, I'm going to go to med school, be a doctor, but you had this inkling that you wanted to be a stand-up comic and an actor? Exactly. That, that's exactly it. I mean, it was always a pipe dream to be an actor and, and, and do comedy, but I just, uh, I didn't think it was realistic for, you know, a, a short, small, weenist Asian to uh, <laughs> make it. I was like, eh, I don't think so. Uh-huh. But um, but Somebody I really loved performing. I loved comedy, yeah. and and um, so I would just do stand up comedy as a hobby while yeah. I was working as a doctor. And so, you know, I, I, knocked up was the first movie that I did, and yeah. I, I played the doctor in that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that that was really kind of opened the doors for me. And then the hangar would just burst the doors wide open. So. And, and and when you when you decided that you wanted to do this, did you, at what point did you go? Okay, I'm going to leave being because that's a pretty cushy position to leave, right? You know, it was a great cushy position to leave. I was a partner at my my practice, and uh, you know, it was just a great living that I could have had the rest of my life. But after I remember, after knocked up, I booked that movie. My wife actually said, "This is, you know, this is time for who's also a doctor." It was like, you know, I think it's time. You, you, you if you, you gotta take your shot right now. Chase your she dreams. Needs- how many? Of those, yeah, how many she of really those, supported me. She, she told really? me to quit my job. She said, "She said, you know, I don't want you moping around like really sad and resentful <laughs> yeah. like at home. Like, like I'm not forcing you to to do this job. You know, yeah. it's it's clear that you want to be an actor, and this is your opportunity. You got to go for it. So, as I, I really owe a lot to my wife. Um, let, let, let me ask you then. So, you, so you quit your job, and then you become uh, a, an actor, and then you say, what pays better? Oh, what pay? Uh, <laughs> well, he owns his own practice. I mean, <laughs> anyway, yeah, it wasn't my own practice. I was salaried there at at, uh, uh, at Kaiser as an HMO in in California. Yeah, so, at Woodland no, I mean, Hills, right? Say Woodland again? Hills. At Woodland Hills, California. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, acting. Well, to be very honest, that that's the thing about acting. Some jobs pay a lot of money, and yeah. some jobs pay, you know, relatively less, relatively less money. It's still good money all around, but you you, you don't. I've never been fini- I've never been financially motivated ever in my life. All yeah. I wanted to be was just a working actor. Even if I was making, I remember telling my wife, even if I made less money as an actor doing yeah. what I love to do, at least I'm doing what I love to do. That's it didn't amazing. matter if I was rich or poor. It, it didn't matter, and it still doesn't. Did you ever do negotiations as Chow? For for because for, 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 I would imagine that that would go well oh, for you. Oh man, because that would put fear. Ah, into I'd the have more leverage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in this movie, the movie Chow, and we don't want to give too much away, but in the Hangover Part Three, uh, your character is is the very central part of the movie. Uh, it, uh, tell us, uh, give us a little bit that we that, that we don't know about your character that that we might learn in, in in this next movie. I think Chow's a devil. If you think about, it. if you put all movies end to end to end, he's like Lucifer. It's like the wolf pack has like met the devil in Hangover one yeah. and had just kind of now they want to move on with their lives but they got to deal with uh they got to dance with the devil like one more time <laughs> i mean chow is like the face of consequence yeah. in life you know <laughs> they kind of have to deal like everyone we all have like personal demons and yeah. chow is like the cinematic embodiment of like demons you yeah. know and so for in, in alan played by zach galifianakis funniest man alive oh. for him to like move on with his life he's got to He's got to face me one more time. And then just when you think the devil's down and out, just, 
you know, think again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this movie, it's, uh, it is a hilarious. So great oh, job. Thank again. you guys for seeing it. I yeah. just, yeah, it's it, for me personally, it's been, it's the peak. It's the best thing I've ever done. So, so, so what's next then for, uh, for, for Ken, because you're, you're on community. Yeah. We just got picked up in the States for, uh, another season. Good for you. So Congratulations. really grateful for that. So yeah. I, I'm a, it's the gift that keeps on giving and, and actually we get so much love in Canada, like we, we know that, yeah, yeah. So um, we're really grateful to all the fans in Canada for community, as well as for Hangover, because the, between those two things, that's really, that's really all I want to do. I mean, I, like I don't know what else. I mean, what could be better than that? You know, yeah. I mean, I, I have a couple of animated movies uh, that I have a small part in, and uh, Despicable Me Too and Turbo. I think is coming out. Oh, you're stage. kidding! Despicable yeah. Me Too. It's my kid's favorite movie. Oh, They're really? Yeah, my kids too. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, that's why I signed up for it because they offered me a part. I'm like, my kids love the Minions. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, sign me up, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, yeah. Being a cartoon that your kids love the most. Yeah, I'm going to be one of those guys. That's yeah. when you know you made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Kenji Young, Hangover Part Three. Listen, uh, really appreciate you coming in. Yeah, uh, 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 really a pleasure to meet First you. First show I've ever done in Toronto. Really? This is us? This is you. Oh, yeah. You broke, uh, you broke the cherry yeah, here I broke, in Toronto. Uh-huh, I broke the Canadian cherry. <laughs> <laughs> cherry. The best of the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1. A guest of ours that we have from time to time, Rick Campanelli, uh, for Entertainment Tonight uh, Canada, has a, a radio show with a whole bunch of guys. Uh, look like good guys. Rick, Ito, Luciano, uh, Andy, Rhino, and Lawrence. Oh, oh. Rhino or Reno, I, I don't know. I apologize. Uh, but we've been listening to them. Are they there now? They're talking now? Um, and, and we've been listening to their, their program, oh. and, and I think they're there now. Um, Buongiorno. Hi, Rick. Hi, Richard. Dean. Hi, Richard. Good morning. How Dean, are you? how are you? I'm going to say buongiorno again. Yeah, Bongiorno. That's that's because that's how we do it over here at the Fratelli Squad. Well, I was listening to your I was listening to your show, and it was funny because it sounded like uh, you know when you go to a coffee shop, yes, and and, and you hear a whole bunch of guys sitting around talking, uh, and, and you know that's exactly what it sounded like because you were like, I remember when my neighbor Nino was outside and he well, we, came out with some biscuits. Well, we were talking accordions. It's accordion talk this morning. Why? Well, because we have Claudio Santalucci on with us this morning. He's uh, is he there now? He's right. He's right. He I'm right here. Can you squeeze a little bit for us? I want to oh, yeah, hear that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I want to hear that squeeze biatch. Yeah. Okay, Are you allowed to say biatch on your show? <laughs> well, I guess that's too late now. That's but, uh, Eduardo, by the way. Hey, Eduardo, Eduardo, hey, we buddy. said biatch on your show. <laughs> Everyone can hear us. <laughs> Thank you, guys. There you go. Hey, Thank you, it, Claudio. Come on. <laughs> So okay. let's hear it for that. That guy's that that looks like the hardest instrument in the world to play. <laughs> it is a bit difficult, yeah. Is it really? How old are you? I'm 23. And you, you, you did, when you when you started playing that, did all the kids make funny a bit? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we actually uh, Dean have a little contest for you and your your uh, listeners this morning. Yeah. yeah. Claudio is going to play a few tracks, and you have to name that tune. Oh, oh that's awesome. like rock and roll in a cardi like, accordion style. And, and first of all, let me say this, uh, Claudio. If those kids make funny, they can stick it because that that's sounded right. awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. <laughs> Does it help you get the chicks, though? <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was waiting for that. Maybe not. <laughs> well, okay. oh, I'm actually engaged. Yeah, no, I uh, are you really? Yeah. Oh. At 23, what are you, were you crazy? <laughs> He's an accordion player. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You, you grab and hang on to that, then. <laughs> All right, you want to give him the first one, Claudia? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you guys so, ready? Okay. We're starting easy. We're starting easy for you guys, and we're going to get progressively harder. Are these Italian songs? No, no, no. no, no, no. Well, that's European, right? Sort of. Uh, it's, it's, like, kinda... it's, a, it's like a Toronto artist, actually. Todd, Todd, you, Todd you should know it's that one. Canadian, come on. Do it again. Todd, Todd you, like to, you like to go to the clubs. Na, 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 na. Right? What's that? Yeah. Na, 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 Mia Martina? Uh, no, is it Drake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah you, you, you'll get this next one. Right. Yeah, okay. That was Ready? Stereo of Love, Mia Martina. Oh. I'm gonna fight them all. White stripes, yeah, yeah white stripes. That, that, that is awesome. That, that is good. Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck. ACDC. You guys are quick. You guys are quick. You guys are running out of songs. Well, he's he's a really wow, dude, Rick. He's a really good accordion player, so it makes sense. He is. It does. Okay, we got we got one more. One more. Okay, one more. Oh, it's a tougher one. 
So I'm on a lean on. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Lean on. I'm going old school. Lean, lean, lean. on. Wow. Hey, you guys are good. Wait, how about one? How about, you got another one? You didn't leave any uh, for your listeners. Well, well, we, we we got, else. No, do we have any tarantella yeah, left? Something. Oh, <laughs> give them a tarantella. Yeah, tarantella? That, that, the real thing. Did you, did you guys hear the tarantella I played before? I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> 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 oh my God, that, that's actually before you play, and maybe you should yeah. explain what, what is tarantella. Yeah, tarantella yeah. yeah. is like a traditional Italian dance. Right. Okay. right? I thought it was that's a spider. So when, when, when do you do? When, <laughs> I thought I thought it was an STD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what is? So what is the traditional dance? So when do you do it? You do it like at a, at a, at a wedding? Do you exactly. do it when you at meet a, people? What is it? At a wedding, exactly. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And different regions have their own tarantellas, exactly. which I just so, found out huh. this morning. Yeah, so, yeah. so which region would you like, Dean? Which region in Italy would you like, Claudia? The itchiest region. The itchiest. <laughs> oh, you you just, give me the region you're from, Rick. Uh, well, my dad's from La Marque. They don't I, have tarantella. No, <laughs> no tarantella no. in La Marque. <laughs> <laughs> they just sing they their own songs. Ru- they must wear rubbers there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my mom's dad here. was from Sicily, so okay. there's, there's yeah, got to be a Sicilian tarantella. But what is it, why, why is it tarantella? What, what is the meaning of the word? I'm going to explain. You're the, the accordion player. You should know this thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this what? is a rock with Eduardo, you, Eduardo, you the best. Eduardo. Explain, Lucy. Explain. <laughs> that, that's the reason why we have him on that's the show, true. right? The expert. Expert. Well, but, but I, I want to hear more of you, your voice. Uh, yeah. Well, tarantella. It's uh, it's made of two words, tarantella, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> from the ancient from from the ancient Greek, yeah, yeah. Uh, meaning uh, play, play the accordion. <laughs> 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 goes right in the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and just a quick note, they all sort of end the same way. Pop, pop, like exactly. that. Yeah, right. Listen, listen, it sounds it's, it sounds like some kind of crazy daycare in there. How many people are in that room? There's well, like not, a... as, not as many as usual, Dean, because we have our, uh, our uh, Andy Cantante, one of our regulars. He's in uh, Montreal for the Formula One weekend. Right. So he's uh, he's gonna mm-hmm. be uh, reporting live on the ground from the track. Oh, cool! He says he's on the track, so we'll see. <laughs> you he's got accreditation for that? <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> did we get a cred- no, we don't get any accreditation no. for anything. We just uh, show up, old school styles. We, oh. just, sne- <laughs> we just sneak onto things. So, so um, are, 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 you guys, I sound like you guys have a good time. You do this show on uh, Chin Radio every every Friday from seven to nine, and then uh, and, and and then that's it. They don't let you do the rest what? of the week. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Well, no, Ed- Eduardo, go ahead. You can explain. Well, wait, I, always me. Why do I need to do well, you, are, you know why? I'll tell you why. You I'll tell you why. This is why. You sound like that race car from Cars, the second one. That's why. You sound cool. The Cinquecento. Yeah. I love that character. What, what's the name? Uh, that was... Uh, uh, Francesco. Francesco. That's right. Oh, so yeah. you want me to do my, my Italian accent? Cause no, no. Right now I'm doing my English ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, 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 how come they don't let you guys do the whole thing? Yeah, well, we are well, still on probation right now. And uh, they're, they're trying to think if they like the show. And plus, you know, Rick is pretty expensive. We cannot afford him all week. No, guys, listen. Uh. We just started this show back in, what was it, October? It's yeah, just, six uh, months ago. Yeah. We're still sort of um, uh, guinea pigs, no? Uh, just, thank uh, you, ex- yeah. Ex- ex- Experiment? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Guinea pig. I, no, but Eduardo <laughs> has been doing... You should tell your story. Eduardo came over from Italy five, I six did. years ago. Seven years ago. Seven yeah. now? Yeah, wow, seven time flies, yeah. eh? I didn't know a word of Italian when I came here. Uh, sorry, of English. English. Yeah. When, I, when I came here. And, and, um, and when, when are you going to learn one? Sense. Yeah. <laughs> seven and counting, Eduardo. <laughs> I know, sorry. Uh, I'm trying hard. But the problem, I'm watching Rika. So th- what happened is I was watching Rika on TV every night. And I said, I want to do a radio show with that guy. And then thanks to Luciano. Luciano is another uh, Fratelli uh, um, member. Yeah, it, yep. it just happened. It just wow. happened. We got together at the uh, the Dip Cafe Dip and right. uh, the deal. Yeah. 
Yeah. Did but you... Eduardo does the show every morning uh, on his own. Oh, so right. oh credit, cool. credit to Eduardo. Well, He's here like you guys are every morning. What seven to seven to ten. To 10. So they just have you. So so Rick, you're I, you're just kind of you're just kind of suck holing to I, Eduardo right now. You get, you're like we're, tagging along. I am. Basically, that's exactly it. And we're starting the weekend off right with uh, waking right. up Italian style exactly. with Good. the Fratelli Squad on June. That's it. Well, it's, listen, uh, I, I'm gonna tell you guys. I had a fabulous time, uh, Rick. If uh, your friends or anything like you, you guys are a solid bunch of guys, and I wish you nothing but the best. And let's do this again because we had a great time listening to the accordion. We would love to do this again. And I don't want to forget, we have Desiree here as well. Desiree's in, yeah. in, in the studio with us. She's our twi- Twitter master. How old and is she? Johnny, Johnny Technical Johnny. In the, hey, yeah. hey, De- hey, Des, you hey can talk. listen. How yeah. old, is, how old oh. is Desiree? Do you want Des to answer for herself? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, come on, Des. Get to the She's microphone. shy. I have, She's a, qu- very I have shy. a question for her, too. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> She's turning red as <laughs> you speak. Yeah. All right, go I'll ahead. Be, I'll be 29. She'll be 29. How many times have you been a sunshine girl? <laughs> <laughs> We needed to do that. <laughs> you just had to go there. I don't know how many times, but we are we are bringing Des is bringing on the chin uh, bikini guys and girls very soon. Right? Oh, you're chin. kidding! Yeah, oh, yeah. wow! Yeah. Oh. Tell them more about in, that if in you want. In the next few weeks, yeah. uh, in yeah. prep for our chin picnic. That's right. right. Okay. Uh, we, well, m- we might be able to share, guys, if you want. What? Share Des or share Pete Guest? <laughs> um, think about let, that. One. Let me talk with my lawyer. Okay, all right. We'll figure that out. All right, listen. Hey guys, guys, uh, great we, having you guys. Great, ta- great talking to you. Thank you so much for giving us some time on your station. We really appreciate it. And uh, Rick, love you and wish you nothing but the best, guys. Thanks so much love for your you time. Love you guys. Amore. Amore. Yes. The Dean Blundell Show. Pleasure having you guys. Hey, see you guys. See you guys. Ciao, ciao. The biggest and the best. This is the best of the Dean Blundell Show on the Edge. Larry from Georgetown, how are you? How you doing? Good well, question. For, be good. Yep, <laughs> Georgetown <laughs> separation. Uh, Larry from Georgetown, Jeff Wells uh, at Wells Family Law on Twitter, McDonald and Partners. He's here. He's, what's your question? Good morning, gentlemen. I'm currently going through a 23 year common law separation. <sighs> wow. My my question is regarding her RSP. Am I entitled to half of it? Well, in order for you to be entitled to it, you would have to have a viable uh, joint venture claim. So joint venture is, is a, a word in the Supreme Court used in a case recently where the husband made a bundle on selling his company and they were common law spouses. and. She said, hey, listen, I'm an unmarried spouse. I have no property rights, but we were involved in this joint venture, and I want more money. And the Supreme Court said, yeah. You really? Have, you were in this joint family relationship, and certain sacrifices made above and beyond, like separate from the spouse support issue. So can you, what are the other factors? Like, what, is the, what, what are the other properties involved? Well, uh, I mean, the home we live in is, is it, uh, we're, um, partners on the house well right? let me, hold on let me ask you another question so you guys bought a house did she contribute to those rsps herself or did you do it too and be truthful no, don't she, be she contributed herself. yeah don't be a douchebag then there's there's law and then there's common sense don't be a douchebag and say i'm entitled to half of what she accrued because she did the work you didn't and whether you're you bought the house together then you're entitled to that common sense right. should be applied okay. in all I'm, that stuff i'm not trying to be a douchebag with her rsps well how much is in the rsp first <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm not a heck of a lot, but like, like how much? How much? So I want to hear. Well, this, this is this is the argument. Okay. No, but how yeah. much? How don't much? avoid the question. How much? <laughs> <laughs> Three grand. <laughs> no, we're only talking pretty grand. <laughs> really? It's only three grand in RSPs. Well, just 30. remember, that's deferred income. 30. Right? So 30. Oh, 30. well. The RSP is deferred income, so yeah, after the tax man gets his money. 15, yeah. Yeah, it's nothing, dude. It's no, it's no money at all. Forget it. If she did it, be a man and, and walk Better away Better have that it. money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more lawyer costs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay. I, I have all the vehicles in my name. A sports car, a bike, blah, blah, blah. She says she's entitled to half of my vehicles, but all of her RSP. Well, did she contribute to the vehicles? 
hard to say. Uh, no, it's I mean, not. We, it's not hard to say. If she bought half the vehicles and paid for her. half the vehicles, then she's entitled to half the vehicles. It's it's common <laughs> sense. It's like if Todd and I went splitsies on uh, a 12-inch dildo, and all of a sudden he and I got in a big argument, yeah, and yeah. we weren't working together. And uh, or, or or we Todd bought it for the show, right? Let's say you probably sure. you bought the twelve inch double ended jelly yeah, bomb for yeah. the whole show. Use is this one. a good analogy, yeah. Jeff? Am I? Yes, it is. Thanks. Okay. That, yeah. comes up, <laughs> I, that comes up all the time in my office. I yeah. got the jelly doll. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say Todd, out of the kindness of his heart, buys a two hundred dollar double ended jelly dong, veins everything, and it, it, and and uh, and it's for the show, express purposes of entertainment. Yeah. And I say, okay, we're not working together. I want the jelly dong, and he says, no, I bought it. And I go, well, yeah. you know, it's my show, and he says he uses. That's his jelly dog. Yeah, that is Todd's double ended purple <laughs> veiny jelly dog. That is not all mine. mine. Even if we used it together, it is still mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> am I right or am I right, Jeff, in the eyes of the law? Yeah, I think that Todd would be better off by having a marriage co- or a cohabitation agreement regarding that that instrument of pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> instrument of pleasure. <laughs> oh, it, it hurts. <laughs> the first few times. Yeah, so. and you're good after that. In a parallel universe, it would be the worst of the Dean Blundell Show. But fortunately, we're on this side where it's the best of the Dean Blundell Show. The best of the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. This is your Edge Files with Dean Blundell on the Edge. Meet Stephanie Mickles. Let this gross you out today, folks. (laughs) 45-year-old behavioral specialist for a school district in Hartford, Connecticut. Accused of having sex with the family dog. Okay. What kind of dog? Police found out about the alleged sexual liaison during an investigation by the Child Advocacy Center. It started last year. No word on why the investigation was being done at her home. However, they found pictures and video of Mickles having sex with the family dog. Encounters took place from August 1st to August 31st, 2008, so it was just her experimental phase, I guess. Unfortunately for her, there's no statute uh, for of limitations for bestiality. So after uh, after the people that watched the video vomited, <laughs> uh, they uh, arrested Mickles and charged her with bestiality. She was later released from jail on a five thousand dollar bond. Recently, um, the grand jury actually had to watch footage of Mickles and the pooch. They ended up indicting her with unnatural, perverted sex practices. <laughs> you know I was sick, too. If it's unnatural, perverted sex practices, and there's no law against it there. Oh. Yeah. I wonder what happened. <laughs> I don't want to know. I, I, I don't know how to say this, but pro- I wonder if the dog enjoyed it. It was a schnauzer, so probably <laughs> those German dogs into the crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me, Christina Salinas, uh, her husband. She's a hot piece of you know what too. Mm. Yeah. Um, her husband said he regrets uh, telling nine one one that his wife uh, bit his wiener. The incident happened last Sunday after Salinas and her husband Anthony Hill got into an argument while getting pissed up at the Penn Valley Rodeo. <laughs> where all the, all the bad things happen, huh? At the rodeo. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she wanted to stay in line dance, but he wanted to go home because he was, quote, sick of that crap. Uh, the argument escalated once a couple got home. Salinas grabbed a couple kitchen knives. That's when her ex-husband, who lives with a couple, <laughs> weird, talked her into dropping the knives. Yeah, yeah, her ex-husband lives yeah. with her and her new husband. <laughs> this whole thing is... Yep. Uh, when Hill tried to leave the house and uh, got her four kids in the car, Salinas ran out and attacked him with her uh, husband and ex-husband trying to hold her down. She lost it. She somehow managed to bite Hill's penis and his hand. He called 911, now regrets doing it as the couple routinely assault each other. He said, I've assaulted her before in arguments. He said, we worked it out. Little did he know you're not supposed to say that to the police because they arrested both of them. Uh, <laughs> it's just what we do. We beat the crap out of each that other. That must be some magic poontang, though, I'll tell you, because oh. the ex-husband lives there, and he and this guy's being bitten on the wiener by her, and he's like, I shouldn't have even called the police. I love her so much. 
she you are works right. Thing. Yeah, big time. She is it's good. Like, it's like the golden arch. It's all that makeup sex, big probably. Big time, People yeah. Nuts, and then they just, they just get into it. I let no, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> and uh, Justin Bieber in more trouble. Yesterday, we uh, we all know he's a huge ass hammer. We know that. <laughs> he's a massive little meat stick. <clears throat> but this kind of stuff just proves that he doesn't give a crap about anybody, including children. You know, I had that thing. Let's let's get this trending again. Uh, go to my. I'll tweet it later. But uh, Justin Bieber hates kids. Let's yeah. do that. Justin Bieber hates kids. Let's get that hashtag trending on Twitter. <laughs> uh, driving around in his uh, little um, girly Ferrari. Up and down the streets of his uh, Calabasas gated community, been pissing his neighbors off. You know, his one neighbor came out to confront him about his speed the other day, and Justin spit in his face and said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to effing kill you. Yeah, and the police are considering whether or not to prosecute him on that yeah, one. Indicting yeah, indicting him for yeah. threats to cause bodily harm and threats to cause death. Now he's under evasion. Now there's two extra um, extra investigations going on. Eric Dickerson and Keyshawn Johnson. Eric Dickerson, legendary uh, NFL running back. And Keyshawn Johnson, uh, commentator for Fox Sports and uh, a, a wide receiver, formerly of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, New York Jets. Uh, funny guy. So Keyshawn's dropping his kids off at school. He comes back. And and this little dickhead, this little puke, this little sausage goes flying down the street on his, uh, on his, on his Ferrari. Huh. So he's like, yeah, come on, slow down. No, turns around, boom, comes does the same thing. So Keyshawn goes to his house. Keyshawn Johnson, six four two twelve, former NFL football player, goes to his house. What does Justin do? Because he's so tough. He ran into the house, locked the doors, and told people that he wasn't there. Exactly, and it wasn't me driving. No, wasn't me. Wasn't me driving. Eric Dickerson later tweeted, "Slow down, Justin. Someone's going to whoop your ass." Uh, other reports of him uh, driving around on one of those little little cute little segways, those little scooters, mm-hmm. smoking dope with his hat sideways. <laughs> that I can't believe. Right, yeah, <laughs> that I can't that's blame not him a for. bad idea. Okay. Yeah, that's be pretty, pretty fun <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Just... Hey. <laughs> uh, so Keyshawn goes over to the house. Keyshawn knocks on the door. He won't come in. He won't come out. He won't even address the guy. Keyshawn uh. is like, I am not moving till you come out here, sucker. Ain't no way you coming out with me. Which is so weird. Because you, if you think, if anybody, I'm trying to think of anybody that would rather come face to face with a massive Johnson. It's for sure Bieber. <laughs> Surprised he didn't come outside and try and lick him. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You won Big Johnson. <laughs> 633. Those are your edge files, whatever the hell day it is in uh, May of the year 2013. The Edge Files on 102.1. The Edge. This is the best of the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1. The Edge. One of my uh, favorite guests over the past 15 yeah. years or so doing this job is here. Uh, please welcome <laughs> comedian, funny guy, Canadian, Mr. Harlan Williams. Yeah. Oh, he's good. He's real good. <laughs> oh, wait, that's me. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. me. I can't do that about myself. I can do it. Yeah, then I can do it too. He's yeah. real good. He's <laughs> real good. I did it twice. Twice is nice. How are you, man? <laughs> oh, look at me. Yeah. I'm delicious. <laughs> you, look, me? you look better than ever. Right? I'm you, clean, I clean, you, delicious. You came, you came in here this morning and I no. thought, my God, he looks terrific. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I Isn't did. that an old hair commercial? My God. My he God, looks he terrific. smells terrific. Right Remember here. that old commercial where they'd sniff each other's hair? Yeah. I was like, I think it was in the 80s. Like, gee, you smell terrific. <laughs> remember? I don't remember that one. I do. I do. Yeah. It was like a Pantene commercial. Yeah, or Head like, and Shoulders yeah, or Irish yeah. Spring. Or, I think it was Irish Spring where the guy's leaning in. It's a little creepy, right? He's leaning yeah. Because huh. if you did that on the subway, you'd get arrested. Oh, nowadays, yeah. yeah. But in the 70s, you could sniff anyone, <laughs> anywhere. Oh, those tight designer Calvin Klein jeans. Jordash. They were ready for the sniffing. Do you, do you remember those Jordash jeans, too? Oh, yeah. You had to do up the zipper with, like, a fork. <laughs> do you remember there was a skit on Second City? Rick Moranis did a... Because Brooke Shields used to do those Calvin Klein commercials. Yeah. And uh, and it would, it would pan up her body and... Right up to her face and go right up her long, slender legs. And then she goes, nothing gets between me and my Calvin Kleins. 
And then Rick Moranis did one where he had the wig up, and they panned all the way up his body and goes, nothing gets between me and my Calvin Kleins except my caca. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boom. Yeah, boom. Boom. Oh, yeah. So listen, you're, you're in a new show called, um, uh, what's it called here again? Sorry, it's called... Uh, da, 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 Package da, da, da. Deal. Package dude. Deal. Ah, yeah. It's yeah. on City TV. City TV. May 6th. It is. Uh, it started Monday, May 6th. No, no, it hasn't started yet that's Beginning the old Monday, date May they changed the date oh, so good. I, think, I think it's coming out in the fall we don't even have the the air date yet but it's coming in the fall we've shot like all 13 episodes and uh it's in the can ready to hit the airwaves what man. is it what's it about uh it's basically about three goofy brothers who are overly close because their parents died when they were little kids and uh, it, it's kind of like, laughing. it's really cheery. Why yeah. is it funny? Um, <laughs> hilarious. The, the pilot episode, we actually show them burning alive in a building. No, no you don't. No, no. It's basically, it's basically, <laughs> it's hilarious. Although yeah. I would watch oh. that. Oh, who wouldn't? <laughs> Three kids nuts? crying. Oh, yeah. oh they oh, watch yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> but uh, what happens is the, the three brothers are overly close. So when you do something with one, one, you get the other two. Yeah. Package deal. Oh, okay. Who are yeah. the other, who are the brothers? Uh, we got a guy named Randall Edwards. He plays the youngest brother. Hilarious. He's, he's, he's amazing. And another guy named Jay Malone, who, uh, who plays the middle brother. And then the, he was the, on the TV show Monk. Was he? <laughs> wow. Is that about a monkey that lost the Y? <laughs> what the monk? The guy who couldn't finish the word before the chimp ate his throat. Hey, look out a monk. Ah! <laughs> it's a great show too yeah, yeah, yeah. i'd watch that one can't finish that why man and then julia voth is uh yes. she's the uh, hottie on the show gorgeous stunning like canadian supermodel sexy as hell and her mm -hmm. and randall are like a couple in the show and randall's awesome you gotta see this kid he's uh the, the, the he's like the lead guy randall mm -hmm. edwards he's, is he really He's amazing. Why aren't you the lead guy? Because he is. Oh. He, he's he's but like you're better. You, you know, better you're looking. bigger name. You're better yeah. looking. Well, this show's about it's about the youngest brother and his uh, like his girlfriend. That's yeah. kind of the the genesis of the show is is him and the relationship between his his girl Julia and then me and uh, me and Jay are the the brothers that never stop getting involved. In, in his life, in his life. Oh. So, 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 you, you, do you do you play like a like a, a degenerate? Do you play like a dude that's got uh, he's got a drinking problem? Do you play one of those guys that can't yeah. watch stop in sports? Is that the guy? Yeah, just yeah. just as Weasley <laughs> troublemaker. Think Rocco from the Days of Our Lives in oh, yeah. Second City, but even slimier. Oh, really? Yeah. No, he's 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 a, my character's like a really like a loving guy. Like he's he's got a really good heart. He's just, uh, he's one of these business guys who's always involved in a shady deal, never gets it right. So in this series, I go from, I start off as a meat salesman. <laughs> Then I'm a. I'm what, a, what kind of meat are you selling? Like I've got an SUV <laughs> yeah. full of corned beef <laughs> and like salami. On a hot day, <laughs> and I think there's even a strip of draft neck in there somewhere, which is really hard to get. Yeah, everyone loves spotted meat. Um, then, is that your line to sell it? Yeah. <laughs> an, an SUV full of meat. Oh yeah, that's what she said. Uh, but uh, and then from there I. Become Become a kid's party planner. Oh, good. And then my final job in this series, I, I invent this new category. I sell caskets for the big and tall. So I'm, I've got these enormous caskets for chubbies. You know, all the, all the fatties out in Mississauga sitting at the Wendy's drive-thru. God, they're probably listening right now and they're going to eat me. By the way, I but saw you a have fat a deal chick. For that? Okay. I saw a, fat, a fat chick, chick? on Queen no Street way. this morning. That's no rare. Way. Dude, this chick was so fat, I'm not kidding. I saw her slam dunk a cake in her own mouth. She jumped. <laughs> She got full air. But her vertical couldn't have been that big. We always see yeah, her vertical. Could it have been was. That she had yeah. cork shoes. Yeah. yeah. She had log rolling shoes. This chick had stretch marks. Have you ever seen stretch marks? Unfortunately. She had stretch marks on the corners of her mouth. This chick 
<laughs> this chick almost ate the old city TV building. She's nuts. She's nuts, dude. She, I saw her. She rolled her, her belly roll. She oh. flipped it up, stuck some raw kernels of popcorn in there, Cooking. did three jumping jacks, and it started to pop. It was unreal, dude. It was unreal. It was delicious. Yeah, yeah. But it was unreal. I had to pull over. I had to pull over. Unreal. Just, there's some flavoring there. Oh, there's you some sweet know. saltina in there, man. There's some Queen Street monk in there. Give me some monk. Give me some Queen Street monk. Jesus Christ. I'm hungry. Unreal. Unreal. I'm not. I'm not at all. Anyways, we, I got off track. Sorry, yeah, no, it's, it's a good show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good show, man. You know who else is on the show? No. You're going to love this, man. Maybe. I was talking about Second City. Eugene Levy's Great guy. on the show. Yeah. He does three episodes of the show. I thank God Martin Short isn't on it because he's a dick. Is he? Yeah, I would not watch that show. <laughs> circumcised Short or uncircumcised? Uncircumcised all the way. Really? Yeah. So you can't even pe- peel it back and tell it to his face. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dude, you're a dick. <laughs> right? That's, that's too bad. Wow. Imagine if you were uncircumcised and foreskin went right over your face. Like, remember those Bazooka Joe comics? Yeah, where that Pud. Guy Mort would Strangely, wear that turtleneck well, sweater. It, wasn't it Pud or was it Mort? Pud, yeah. yeah Pud. You wore like a turtleneck. So what if that yeah. was your foreskin? Like it came oh, up over your mouth. Your breath would be horrible. Oh, yeah. oh you'd have monk breath. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Pamela Lee Anderson's on the show, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Who does she yeah. play? Who does she play? She plays, uh, she plays a uh, therapist, this crazy, like, uh, th- therapist on the show. And is it she, a Canadian show? It's or a Canadian it, show, man. It's filmed here? It's filmed in Vancouver. Yeah. It's the first Canadian uh, show, sitcom, uh, filmed in front of a live audience. It's, oh, you're kidding. It's, it's my third sitcom, and it's totally exactly like the way we shot them in the States. And it... It really, you know, it, it really looks and feels like an American show, yeah. which I'm proud of because I think Canada's long overdue to have not American, American shows, quality but shows. American yeah, yeah, yeah. standards. Yeah. You know, like, We're big fans yeah. of Jerry D. Like, that's a good show, Mr. D. And yeah. I mean, and this show, though, in front of the live audience, that's cool. Like the old Seinfeld sets you see. Exactly. So Jerry D's is a single camera yeah. show. We're a four camera show like Seinfeld or Fraser mm-hmm. or whatever, but... You know, really proud of the product and um, the showrunner, the guy who's kind of running the whole show, a guy named Andrew Ornstein. Great so guy. So it's not just a clever name, showrunner. Showrunner. No, <laughs> He's actually no, no. running yeah. the show. He's running the show. Yeah. Interesting. That, it's interesting how that works. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you take the word janitor, what does that mean? <laughs> That doesn't imply scrubbing out a urinal. No, no. <laughs> urinal scrubber does, though. Yeah, urinal scrubber. Yeah, why aren't they called that? Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Because it's not as sexy. Showrunner. Showrunner's you know, nice. You think he's either running the show or getting people coffee. Either way, yeah. it's not a bad deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, so, so anyway, the show is like American <laughs> standard. Like, but when when you when you when you when you're filming in front, do you ever get freaked out? Because you, you I mean, you, ever, you must have good writers. Because otherwise, you know, no one's laughing, and that's obviously we have good it. writers. But also, you know, I'm kind of well known for going off and improvising. And is and it a little improv on the show? They let too? me improv my ass off. So, so what I'll do is I'll do like two or three takes right off the script, and then yeah. it's just the doors blow open and. And uh, the other brother, Jay Malone, is uh, is a really great stand-up comic out of Halifax. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he's killer at improv, too. So him and I just go off script after about the second or third take. And mm-hmm. it's, it's awesome. So. It, when you do that sort of stuff, is it, is it hard for the other actors not to start like laughing or, or, or keep the contain themselves? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard for all of us to not stop laughing. Like even, even the guy throwing the line out there, we, we just laugh. The cast is great. We're having a great time. And uh, it's, 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 I mean, everyone's improv Like even Randall and Julie. Julia improvs like they that we all go at it and it's a riot because yeah you don't know what's coming and uh we just let it rip tv shows called package deal it'll be on yeah. city tv this fall look for it. where are you on twitter by the way you on twitter twitter yeah. at harlan williams easy and does it that's easy, easy. and uh yep. if you want to see my if you go to a harlanwilliams.com you can join my new uh youtube page where i got this crazy new stunt show called fishlang what it's pronounced fishlang <laughs> 
But it's a, the stunts I do on the show are. You gotta, what are they? Yeah, what's what, an example? Give us, yeah. give us well, a taste. one of them is um, we, me and my sidekick, we see how many donuts we can stuff down the front of our underpants, and we just. I mean, it looks like we have elephantitis down there. We are just stuffing. <laughs> do you know how many you get? We how many, we, how got many, we got it. We I don't want to give it away, oh, but it's yeah. in the forties. It's in the forties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we did another stunt, and don't try any of these at home. Hold it. Collectively, it's in the 40s, or you had a, Just around... Just so on my own. Wow. 40s, that yeah. Is, that's a lot, that means oh. there's some space down there, which doesn't tell a great story. Oh, it's like the first seven donuts you can kind of stack... If you know what I mean. Ah, seven. But after that, <laughs> after that, they're just willy-nilly down there. Uh, <laughs> and then one of the other stunts, you'll like this. And don't try these at home, gang. Gang, Toronto okay. gang, whatever, North York gang, whoever's yeah. listening. Uh, Crips, bloods. We, the bloods, the nasal drips. We uh, we did a, another one where we took, have you ever seen these panty liners with wings on them? Who hasn't? Yeah. Well, are you wearing one right now? Because yeah. you look very relaxed. And please uncross your legs. You're making me nervous. He's got hemorrhoids. It's a necessity. Oh, hemorrhoids. really? I'm still yeah. wearing white pants. Oh, yeah. wow, dude. Not Sharon bad. stoned me. Um, <laughs> but we, we got these, uh, these, these panty liners with wings, yeah. and we stuck them all over our bodies, and we jumped off of stuff and flew. Cause, yeah, because <laughs> that's you need wings to fly, yeah. and we jumped off a five foot ladder and got air. We got air. You gotta watch for schlang. Schlang. YouTube for schlang. How do you spell it? F S H L A A A N N N G. For schlang. You did a hashtag before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, I smoked some hashtag before I came in here this morning. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay. Woo. I'm gonna go play tag as soon as we're done. <laughs> the Dean Blundell Show, 102.1 The Edge.